please do not buy the Vitrix Pro FS12 fight stick until you watch this video. Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Triz, welcome to my domain. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Vitrix Pro FS12 arcade stick, fight stick, whatever you wanna call it. It's sitting right here in my lap. I actually put it up here so you guys can see. Um, I got some things to say about this. The Pro FS12 is the first licensed PS5 ready controller out the box. As in, you get it, it's ready to go, it works fine with the PS5. No modding required. Sporting 12 Sanwa Denshi buttons, a smooth aircraft grade aluminum chassis, and the dazzling purple or white finish. This controller is the Cadillac of button boxes, but it's not just a pretty face. This baby has a lot of quality of life features, like the easy to access back panel that locks in place, integrated carrying handles, cable organizers, and the ergonomic wrist slope. That plus the customizable LEDs and a snap-in USB-C port makes this objectively the most feature-packed controller on the market. I mean, period, it's just got everything you want. But these features are gonna cost you quite a bit. As of making this video on PDP website, pdp.com, this controller is going for $399. That's it, right there. FS12, $399. For my UK people, that's 350 pounds or $537 in Canadian maple bucks, I guess they use. I don't know what they got up there. <laughs> Do you know what you can get with $400? You can get a you can get a PS5 digital edition for that much money. You can get a 64 gigabyte Steam Deck for that amount. I know because I got one sitting back there. You can't really see it, but it's off camera. That's the same amount you're gonna pay for a controller? It's almost the price of two hitboxes. With that big of an asking price, you want to know if the device is worth it. Is it more than pretty or big or sleek or fancy? Does the Vitrix Pro FS12 warrant its big price tag? Well. That's what we're gonna find out today. So, I've talked a lot about this behemoth of a box up until now, but let's take a look at it in depth. I do have to add that when I got the shipping box from PDP, there was this rather large gash in it. In fact, it actually went through the shipping box and damaged the product box as well. I haven't had any issues because of the damaged box, but I did want to make sure to add this into the review. Maybe it happened on the way down to me because it was traveling during a hurricane, or maybe it happened before it left PDP. I just do not know. This controller does work on PS4, PS5, and Windows PC. I'm using on Windows 11. I've had zero issues as far as connecting the FS12 and Steam and Windows recognizes it, you know, no problem. If you guys want a full setup video, leave a comment on this video and let me know if you would like to see that. I could probably knock that out. That wouldn't be that hard to do. Also, you gotta make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that because if I make it, how you gonna know I made it? If you don't subscribe, you'll never, you never know. PDP does send you this nice carrying bag for the FS12 that you can use when you take it to offline tournaments, but I don't see why you would. The build quality is very sturdy and well constructed, but not too heavy to carry. And with the handles underneath, that makes it even easier to transport from setup to setup. But also, just look at it. You don't want to hide this controller. This thing is so pretty and big, you want to show it off. But back to the unboxing. There aren't too many accessories in the box other than the bag, the USB Type-C cable, and the cable management brackets that are detachable and a manual. My Vitrix didn't come with a manual, but it did come with a scannable QR code that takes you to the PDP website where you can find it online. That's all for the unboxing. I'm just gonna show a little bit more of the footage, but after this, we're gonna go to the hands-on look at the Vitrix Pro itself.
looking at the unit itself, you can see that we have the traditional 24 millimeter buttons and the 30 millimeter thumb button. These green buttons that I have are not stock and are actually the Crown Samduska SDB 202s, which I put in basically everything I use. The stock buttons are not bad at all. And in fact, they're actually quieter than these crowns. I just prefer the crowns because I put them in every button box that I own. I just, I just like them better. All the additional buttons are on the face of the controller. We have the PS button right here, the share button. It's not really a share button. It's like a, it's a, it can be mapped to that. It, is, it does that by itself, but there's no share function on the PC. So I can't really test it out, but that's where the share button would be. If you're using PlayStation 4, this one here is the lighting button. You can change the lighting controls. Um, I'll just flick with it real quick and just turn it blue. If you do that, now you cycle it through to where it's just kind of faded in and out. And then you have it where it's on reaction. I think this one is, oh no, this is just a, this next setting is just a hue setting where it just goes to different colors, going from orange now to red and going to pink and purple and back to the greens and blues and everything else. Then you have where it actually on button tap, it actually does something when you hit the buttons, it lights up, which I really like. Um, you also can see here, where is it? If I can actually get it on camera, when you hit a button, the lights on the inside actually light up too. You can change those colors with, um, if you hold the lighting button and the side buttons, left and right side buttons, you can actually change the color of the, the LED that you use whenever you hit a button. So now it's back to blue like it was before, but I can change it to, let's say, now I want to flash green. And now you can see, just like on the sides before I showed you, now it's shining green. Cool little feature. Also, while I got it switched around, you can see there's a headphone jack right there where you can plug headphones in if you want to play like that. I don't know if that robs your opponent of audio at an offline event. Let's say you guys are plugged in, about to play your match, you plug in your headphones. I don't know if that takes away from their audio and you want to get audio, that might be the tech, but we're going to keep on moving. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we also have, let's move, let's turn the lights all back on. This is the audio button. Um, you can control the audio as in the volume that you're getting through the little port that I showed you right here by using the direction pads. I think it's left and right. I haven't messed with that because I, I'm on PC. I have headphones that are wireless. I'm not using, you know, that kind of setup at the moment. But once I get to an event, I would definitely let you guys know how that works. We have a touchpad that works. It is functional. I just don't have a PS4 to play it on. But it's a touchpad that works fine. You also have this little X Vitrix logo, right? This little X Vitrix logo is the tournament mode button. And what the tournament mode button does is that if you press it, you're going to notice something. Watch this. Everything went red. All the lights inside, all these lights right here went red. That shows me, or that tells me that no matter what happens, if I press these buttons, if I press start, over here is the start button. If I press the start button, nothing's gonna happen. If I try to hit the custom, this is a custom button you can set for a different custom key, nothing's gonna happen. I have to turn off the turn mode to use these buttons. Why that's good? For pretty obvious reasons. If you're in a tournament and let's say you have a habit of Maybe you play wild and you flick your hands around and you get mad and you almost rage quit. If you're in tournament and you rage quit or you hit pause on accident, guess what's gonna happen? You get DQ'd. So this is there just in case, just make sure that never ever happens. You get in a tournament, get in an offline situation, hit that lock button, tournament mode's on, you're good to go, you're Gucci, you had nothing to worry about. Also, like I said, this is the pro button right here. The pro button is there custom key their custom button where you can set it in the key bindings to whatever you want it's like whatever game most modern fighting games are pretty good about that where you can change um any kind of button to whatever button you want to use so what i do i have my position reset for guilty gear stride on touchpad and i have my um recording um function where i want to like set up a new recording record them again or like put them on standby i have it set right there so let's say i want to do recording and close slash, I'll just hit at the same time. So I got it instantly. Like, you know, I just got close slash as quick as I could do it versus having to go on the back of the controller and try to reach back here and press a button on the front. That's what the hitbox has, right? On the front of the controller, that's where all the start, L3, R3, all those buttons are over here. So to stop a game, pause a game, reset, all that stuff, you gotta consist, you know, you're playing. Got to reach over there. Plan, got to reach over there. No, no, no. Not with this controller. Everything's on the face. Everything's right here where you can get to it. Easy accessible. I love that. That's that's amazing. All the buttons have like a pretty subtle, pretty decent click. You can't really hear it. You can kind of hear it. It's kind of satisfying. It's nothing, nothing too crazy. 
if that matters to you. I don't know if that matters to anybody. Just wanted to let you hear that real quick. So while we're talking about things on the front of the controller, or really the lack thereof, there's not much going on up here other than we have these detachable cable management brackets. These cable management brackets right here, you take a cable and wrap it around. You see right there, wrap one side, wrap the other right there, wrap it all up and go from there. I don't really, I'm not gonna be wrapping my controller up anytime soon. I'm, I'm at the house, man, I'm chilling. I'm, I'm net playing, I'm not doing nothing offline at the moment. This USB-C port is amazing. This thing right here snaps in so deliberate and it, it's just, it's not going anywhere. I'll, I'll see if you can hear it real quick when I put it in. You can kind of hear that, right? A little snap noise. It kind of clicks in and you can feel like the teeth or whatever's in there that's keeping it together. You can feel it like snap in. It's like, this thing's not going anywhere. This, this, it's, it's good. This is probably the best USB port I've seen on a controller. Better than Hitboxes, better than Snackbox Micro. Just best period. It's just, it snaps in, it's deliberate. You have to have some kind of actual force to pull that out. It's not gonna come out because you jiggled it too much or you're playing a little too forcefully and then it comes, that's not gonna happen. Not with this controller. It's, it's not built like that. And also the reason why it's great that it's USB type C, like you can go get that from Amazon for, you know, however much you wanna spend it for. You wanna get a short one, you can get a short one. You wanna get a longer USB C, USB type C cable, you can get a longer one. It's just way easier to swap out your cables versus going through someone who has their own proprietary cable, their own special unique cable where if it breaks you have to go back and reach out to them and hopefully they have them in stock i'm not talking about anyone specific but you can imagine who i'm talking about some of these controllers have specific unique little proprietary usb ports or cable ports that you can't find anywhere other than them or you can try to make your own with some crazy ass etsy shop stuff I, i'm sorry i don't want to go into it and what you can see here that this is a wide wide controller in the unboxing video, I showed you when I put the hitbox on top of it to see how big or much bigger it is than the hitbox. It is thick with two C's. Thick boy. Damn boy, he's thick. It can't even fit in this camera angle like I got. I have to like kind of move over to see where it's at. It's all the way across my lap. It's heavy duty. My legs are kind of far out as you can see. It's big and it's got this wrist slope. You can't see it right here, but you kind of see the shadow show off this wrist slope. I have big, meaty claws. What did you say, punk? Big meaty claws. Big hands, right? This thing is perfect for that. This thing, whenever I play, it just everything works out fine. Everything feels great. It having that slope, I know a lot of people say, you know, you're not supposed to play like that because of carpal tunnel. You can mess your wrist up, but you can kind of see how it curves down. And it is, to me, a lot more ergonomic. You can kind of see a curve, it's kind of hard to explain. But the first time I picked up this controller and I put it on my lap, I literally did this. <sighs> oh, I that's the, <laughs> that's the noise I made. <laughs> I, I, was, I was elated, dude. This, it feels amazing. And I can do this. My elbows, that's my elbow. My elbows on controller. I can't do that with the hitbox. I can't do it with a snackbox micro. I'll break it. I love the form of this. I love how it feels. This cold aluminum, it feels good, man. In the summer, or it's starting to get a lot colder now. But even if it's even if you don't mind the cold, it's just when you put your hands on it, you feel that coldness of it. It feels cool to the touch, relaxing. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, this is, this is good. I could play on this thing all day and never be annoyed by it. Never. I just, just put it right here in my lap. I actually lower my shoulders be in a relaxed position and play without like even doing any, doing much. Tiger knees, nothing, nothing's, nothing certain. Nothing is annoying me. Everything's good with this controller. I like this controller a lot. I, I love the way it feels more than anything. There is one thing that I want to talk about that is kind of annoying, right? It's kind of an issue. On the back, we have the Vitrix logo, right? On this smooth foam material. Now, at a glance, you would think, huh, Triz, that looks probably kind of grippy, right? It's foam. It should be grippy. It is not. This foam right here is not grippy. It's actually kind of slick. Now, these outer parts right here, these parts are rubber. And they're little rubber feet or little rubber pads. And they are grippy on any surface, right? Sometimes I'm playing like little shorts like these, like little, you know, khaki, denim, whatever kind of material wool or whatever it is shorts and it's fine if i have my legs pushed out enough to where these parts are in contact with my actual pants or whatever let's say uh let's say i'm a female and my legs are a lot closer in this part is going to slip it's going to make any material slip 
it's not that annoying. It's definitely noticeable though. Like if, I, if I'm playing like this, I'm playing, this thing is gonna slip. I can feel like moving. It's gonna, it's gonna go on down your lap, right? So you gotta kind of, you know, boss up, spread your legs out, you know, let your blank hang, get a little open up stance, and it's gonna be fine because the, the grip is on the outside. The grip is on these outer portions of the bottom of it. That's my biggest gripe, and that's not a bunch of a gripe, if you can tell. But real quick, let's open it up. We're gonna do a whole modding section in just a second, but I wanna show you the inside real quick. If I can get it up to the camera, you can kind of see right there that there's the switch for the different sections. It says PS5, PS4, and PC. And I'm gonna bring it up again, but I don't know how I'm gonna enunciate it because I don't think you can really see it. This little Allen wrench, I had no idea what this Allen wrench was for. This Allen wrench right here actually removes the detachable um, cable hooks. So if you wanted to take those out, take the Allen wrench that comes with it, unscrew those, and you just have a smooth controller without these things kind of getting in the way. As you can see, it's kind of like right there close to my desk. So I don't really need them, but I just want to keep them on for the video. Good segue, we're gonna go right into the modding section. Let's go. As you have probably seen during the unboxing, there is the latch here where you can access the inside components. This panel stays open on its own and gets completely out of the way so you can really get in there and work. Like I said before, they have this little Allen wrench that you can use to remove the uh, cable management hooks if you don't want to keep them on while you're playing at home. Next, you can see that all the cables come together at this center port that then connects to the circuit board. The circuit board is underneath all of this black plastic and is protected so you can't accidentally bend a pin or break your new expensive controller. As you can see, just like any of my other modding videos, I got to use my handy dandy needle nose pliers to get the cables off of the old buttons. And when you're modding a new controller, the cables are especially difficult to remove but the more you replace your buttons, the quicker and easier it becomes. Now let's do a sound comparison from the stock Sanwas and the crowns. PDP made sure to keep all the cables tied to each other and easy to work around. I like this feature a lot because it's something that I would normally have to do myself with some zip ties and labels so I wouldn't connect the wrong buttons to the wrong cables. Like a lot of the features of the FS12, they are small, but they are great addition. Replacing these buttons was as simple as it ever is in any of my other controllers, but one button in particular was a headache, but I, I don't blame PDP for this. Most arcade buttons are snap-in buttons, which means that all you have to do is push them in to their perspective holes and they snap into place firmly because they have these little wide parts that wedge them down onto the controller after you push them in. The crown buttons I have grown attached to are screw in, which means they have to be screwed in with an additional piece of plastic from the inside of the controller. This always causes me some frustration because I have to use needle nose pliers to try to get the button screwed in as tightly as I can because my fingers are simply too big to fit in between the buttons. This problem was extra frustrating on the FS12 because the last two buttons on the right side are surrounded by this black plastic enclosure. It only leaves a bit of room to slide the clear plastic tightening part of the crowns into position to catch the thread and secure the button. I honestly spent like an hour on this last button, but I somehow made it fit and all the buttons are now secure. Building inside of this controller was fairly easy. For the most part, it was the easiest controller that I've ever had to build in, but that black enclosure, that little black plastic area that basically covers up the circuit board area, that gave me a lot of headache. Like that really sucked trying to get um, the plastic, you know, tightening piece onto it. It's not PDP's fault. I'm sure most people use the snap-in buttons. I'm a little different, so that's on me. I have to do what I have to do to make it fit. So I got it in there. I don't really know how. I just a lot of time and pressure and good luck, I guess. Like I said, modding, just like everything else with this controller, easy, great, and just a pleasure. To wrap it all up, the Vitrix Pro FS12 is my favorite controller that I've ever played with, period. No, it doesn't make me play any better or give me godlike footsies or fine tune my reflexes and fix my neutral, but it does make me want to play for longer. And it has a slew of features that make me focus on fighting my opponent rather than fighting with this piece of metal that's in my lap. 
It feels great, it connects easy, and looks spectacular. The only real and obvious issue is the price. So, like I initially asked, does this controller warrant the $400 price tag? If you are occasional fighting game enjoyer, you want to try out a button box type of controller, I would tell you not to buy this as your first controller. That would give you essentially the same experience speaking specifically from the standpoint of using your fingers to move around in a fighting game. There's a bunch of controllers that do that. You don't have to get the Vitrix to do that, especially if you're, you know, very casual and you don't play very often. But if you are a pretty consistent fighting game player and you want to upgrade from whatever you're on now to the hottest thing on the market, I got a few questions for you. What's wrong with the controller you have now? What doesn't it do that the FS12 will do? Do you want to spend $400 on something that you pretty much already have at home? Do you have Pepe hands? All jokes aside, if you have small hands, this controller, I don't think is for you. This controller is for big, meaty claws like this. Big old, big hands. If you got big hands, this controller is perfect for you. Um, that's, I mean, you, I love that, love that. And if you're already happy with the controller you have, don't buy this controller. The features are awesome, but it's not worth forking out $400 if you have something that already works and you already like at your house. It's just kind of redundant now if you play daily i'm talking like three or four hours like you play all the time grinding you're in the lab you constantly working on things you know you you rack up hours on your fighting games that's what you do every day right also if you go to locals or offline events kind of consistently you try to make it out there at least to maybe the monthlies around in your area and if you go to majors you know you travel to go to a major event and you've competed let's say evo or ceo or dream hacks happening right now you went to one of these places you played and you you're pretty like serious you travel for this and if you played a few button box controllers and they never quite fit right for whatever reason you know one was too small one didn't have enough space here i didn't like the way this one felt you know you've kind of like been around town you've you had your share of button boxes and you kind of know what you want and again the big ticker and you have big hands this is without a doubt what you should be getting if if you check all those you know specific little boxes i just mentioned there this controller is very good it has a lot of things that honestly push it up to that $400 mark and it kind of just feature packed it. That's the only way I can describe it. it. It feature packed it. It put all those features into this unit and there's no way they could have made this thing cheaper than that price for everything that's in it and its size and everything that we went over earlier. Like everything I showed you with the unboxing, kind of just going through it, talking about it, all that stuff. I don't think you could have made this thing any cheaper. Like I said, Without a doubt, this is my favorite controller I've ever played on, and I don't regret spending 400 bucks on it at all. Not at all. I don't regret it, personally. But I also realized that this is, for all intents and purposes, a high-end luxury item. It's not 100% necessary. It's not performance boosting. It's not a competitive edge, necessarily, other than it's feeling more comfortable on a piece of equipment. But other than that, it's not a performance boost. You don't need this. Read my lips. Look at me, huh? Check me out. Read me. You don't need this, but damn, does it feel good as hell to play on. So to wrap it all up, is it worth 400 bucks? Yeah, it's worth it. Do you need it? No, not at all. You don't need this controller. You can get the hip box. You can get the snack box micro. You can get, um, make your own if you want to. You can go buy the cheap retro arcade, arcade, whatever it is, stick that I reviewed. Um, I could put it on the cards up here. You can buy that. You can buy that and get the same essential, you know, things that a button box does, which is using your fingers to play fighting games. You can get that through a lot of different, you know, avenues as far as something that sits in your lap. If you do get it, it's awesome. You're going to love it. You're never going to stop playing on it. It's uh, it's amazing. I love it. I love it. I, love it. I can't say it enough. I love this thing. But I won't tell you that you need to go run out and buy it just because because you don't but there's no other controller that has all these features there's no other controller that has all these features all this going on all this easy functionality there's no other controller that has that period and that's what that 400 dollars asking price is basically telling you you're not gonna be able to get that all that stuff wrapped into one unit for less than that so that's pretty much it that's the premium you know that's the premium you got to pay it's hard out here but thank you guys so much. That's going to wrap up today's video. It took a long time to get this video out. Um, I wanted to make it right. I want to do all the proper steps. I could have got on here, did a little five minute video and just had the board up with a webcam playing Guilty Gear Strive and just talking over it. Yeah, I really like the controller. No, nah, I want to actually sit down, write up a script. The script's like pff, easily 2000 something words um, and really go over the great 
highlighted points that I found through my first month of using this controller and getting a good handle on it. But on to the future, I got another video coming out. My next video in between any kind of reactions or gameplay or streams, my actual project video I'm working on is going to be covering um, something a little more mobile, something a little more portable. That's all I'm going to say. Something that's a lot more mobile and it's going to take place outside of this room. I know that's crazy. I'm going to be touching grass in the next video. Look out for that video. The only way you're going to know about that video is if you subscribe right now. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also hit the like button to show me that you liked the video. It helps me out a bunch. And if you made it this far, leave a little purple emoji in the comment section to show me that I knew you were there. It'll be kind of like like a like a secret handshake we got. Like if I see that, I'll leave a heart on it and it's like I know you watched the end of the video because you wouldn't left that there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just do it. Do it for me. I appreciate it. But guys, see you in the next one. Just remember, it's been real. It's been nice, but it has been real nice. I'll catch y'all later. Be safe and play some video games, man. Play some fighting games. You don't have to break the bank to get a controller. But if you do, yeah, you're really going to like the controller. So I got to say, I'm out of here. Deuces.